Right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, I can't, I can't see you very well, guys, because they've got these big hoofing floodlights. Um, so, my name's Ian Tell. I work for a company called Arista. We were Mojo Wi-Fi. Um, I do Wi-Fi. I don't do switches. I don't do the dark side with BGP and EVPN and all that kind of thing. Um, I'm a CWNE. And I apologise for bringing that up and being quite blasé about it, but I only got it last week, so this is my first presentation since I got it. So I'm feeling like, yes, baby. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, um, as you can see, at iTurley. The conversation today is about Wi-Fi 6. Is it the promised land? You may hear me refer to it as AX. I may refer to it as Wi-Fi 6. Sometimes I, you know, flirt, flirt between the two. Um, so, ooh, was that me? Hang on. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, and let's be truthful, it was 1997, they invented Wi-Fi. And the reason why I'm going down this path is I think it's important to understand where we've come from with Wi-Fi and where the journey's going to with Wi-Fi. Because it's all, you know, Keith, Keith stood up here earlier and he said, um, I've still got BGN networks out there working. And BGN, is, if the network's built properly and it's doing what you need it to do, great. If I've got high density and I want to improve the efficiency of my network, then I'm going to start looking at the new technologies as, uh, uh, that we've got. So, back in 97, Wi-Fi started. Um, it wasn't in a galaxy far, far away. It was in a place called Australia. A little place. Um, and a guy called John Sullivan. Sorry, mine went blank there. Um, and he invented something called OFDM. So before that, there was the 802.11 body. But they decided that they were going to use OFDM in the long term to, 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 to be the basis of the Wi-Fi. Um, you'll also note that I am a bit of a geeky geek type. The last time I did a presentation, I used Captain America and stuff like that on slides. Today, I tried to do a Star Wars thing. Um, but obviously, I tried to get it to scroll up the screen, and it took me hours, and then I tried to write the presentation on the train yesterday, and it didn't really work very well. So we've built this Wi-Fi network. And over time, we've got more and more devices. We have more and more uses. You know, we initially started out by building Wi-Fi networks for coverage only. We had one or two devices. Now, now Wi-Fi is everywhere. You know, the more devices that we get associated to the network, the more problems that we get created to the network if it's not built properly. If we have, um, we can create issues such as co-channel interference, adjacent channel interference. Um, it's everywhere. It's become proliferate, you know, that word. Now, what, was, what, what happened was we went B, 11 meg, and then we went G, 54 meg. Ooh, we're getting faster. And then we went A, ooh, different frequency. Then we went to this N stuff, and it was a little bit faster. But it was still single user, single input, single output, and then we came along with a magic thing. We, 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 we did this wave, this um, AC stuff. Wi-Fi 5, and it was meant to, it was meant to bring, bring light and glory to the wonderful world of Wi-Fi because it had this thing called multi-user MIMO. Well, it never actually had multi-user MIMO in the first wave. And that, 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 so people were bringing out access, and there is a point behind this, trust me. I'm not just talking fun for the fun of it. We, 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 had, um, we, had, we had single user, multi-input, multi-output APs on AC wave one. A little bit more speed, but then when we got to wave two, wave two had multi-user MIMO. Multi-user MIMO was meant to be the holy grail. Um, while we're doing this, anyone in this, who has iPhones in this room? Put your hands in the air, please. Okay, does anybody have in their pockets uh, Samsung S7s or above? Okay. So the guys with the Samsungs could use something called multi-user MIMO. And this is the point that we're coming on to, that 
We built this technology from the access point perspective. And the one thing that we didn't have, we didn't have the client devices. The reason I asked if you've got iPhones, um, if you've got an iPhone 11, we're not gonna have that conversation yet. But if you had iPhones, they have never, ever, ever supported multi-user MIMO. So we came out with this fantastic technology that the APs could talk to, to little groups of people. We could have up to four devices at a time. So we were, we, we were going to try and free up some of the airtime by, by using a single time slot to transmit to multiple devices. So that was meant to help the legacy devices. Well, it never really happened. So what we need to do is we need to build access points that are quicker, faster, more efficient, and that's what we've done with Wi-Fi 6 in theory. So, if we look at what makes uh, a, a device Wi-Fi 6 certifiable, and I'll, I'll, I'll bring this up uh, uh, again. Certifiable is, you have to meet some of these criteria to become certifiable, okay? Don't like that screen. I can't get on with that screen. Sorry. Um, so I might build an access point. We've all so uh, about nine months ago, people came out with AX access points, and they were really nice. And everyone went, oh, "You've got AX access points." And I said, "The industry went, yeah, really." No, you haven't. What you've got is you've got a compatible device because you don't have something that is certifiable. You don't have an access point that is going to do multi-user MIMO downlink. Um, it's not going to do OFDMA downlink. It's not an 8x8. It doesn't use target wait time. But at that point, we started to hear rumours. And the rumours were about the client devices. Because one of the problems was when we built that Wi-Fi 5 network, we never actually got the devices in the number that were required to see an improvement on the Wi-Fi network using AC. So, I'm just, I'm just totally throwing myself there. So, certifiable. We've now got APs that are <coughs> certifiable. The latest ruckus one is a Wi-Fi 6 certified AP. Um, uses the same, chips, same chipset that we do, so we're going to become certified as well. Um, but you have to meet these requirements. Now, this is where we're talking about Wi-Fi 6 certifiable or, or certified. So, does any of that sound familiar to where we were? Because actually, we haven't had a, a Wi-Fi 6 um, <coughs> Wave 1 and a Wi-Fi 6 Wave 2, which we did with AC, we've actually come out with APs that are, in theory, they're Wave 1 because they're not certifiable, they're compatible, which was part of the problem with, with um, 802.11 AC. History has kind of repeated itself. People have bought APs that aren't certifiable, but they're compatible, and that's great because we need to start making that movement and making that transition into the marketplace. But does that bring any benefit to me, really? We're talking about, is Wi-Fi 6 the promised land? Wi-Fi 6 has a lot of features that are going to bring improved efficiencies, OFDMA resource units, uh, target wait time, spatial colouring. All those things should and I say should, because I haven't got an AP yet and I don't have an AX client, so I haven't tested it for myself. But it should improve the efficiencies of the Wi-Fi. It should help reduce um, channel utilisation if we build it right. So, what we need to do is we need to build the clients, and that was the problem with the 802.11ac. Now we do have the clients out there. Samsung has the first Wi-Fi 6 certified ACAX phone. Does anybody in this room have an S10? I applaud you. The reason is because if we don't get these devices and we don't use these devices, that when we put all these new APs out there, we're not going to see the improvement. 
We have PCI cards ready to go in, desktops. We have Intel cards to replace the inbuilt wireless cards that were on our laptops. Be careful with that one. You've got to watch your, your Windows 10 drivers. It gets a little bit flaky and a little bit dodgy. Um, I've even got external antenna AX. The point that I'm making here is that we now have the technology. We've got the APs that will talk to the clients in the correct manner. If the clients are Wi-Fi 6 certified and they support uh, trigger response, we're going to see a lot of improvements, but we have to make sure that the APs do what the clients need them to do. Because now we're going to be talking the AP. The AP is going to start controlling more about what when, when the because if we do multi-user MIMO up, upstream or uh, OFDMA upstream to the AP from the client, the AP has to take control of that. The AP is going to go, oh, you three guys, you can transmit at this time. And it will send you a packet and it can send the information when you, when, when you get the right slot. So we've got to make sure the device is supported. iPhone 11. I don't believe, and I checked this yesterday, that the iPhone 11 is Wi-Fi certified. I'm about to go out and buy one because my other phone's broken. It's correct. It's, 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 correct. it's correct. It's not certified. No, none of the versions ever. For example, they're not certified. Apple don't do Wi-Fi. Oh, don't they? they don't oh, see? They Thank you. I thought they used to. I just use them. If it works, it works. And if it don't, I swear it is an apple. Um, so, does anyone have any questions at the moment? Does everybody understand why, why I was highlighting the, the point about the, the older iPhones and not supporting multi-user MIMO? About the clients having to be ready. The clients have to be shipped. Because we honestly think that anywhere between... It's, you're looking at 30% plus of devices on the network have to be a, sorry, Wi-Fi 6 compatible because then we're going to start seeing the improvement for the legacy clients. And when we're talking legacy now, we're talking AC clients, really. You know, anything backwards is a legacy client. So, to conclude, the clients are out there. They're being shipped. If you are considering or you're looking at building any type of Wi-Fi 6 network, you have to make sure that your access points are certifiable. Because if you're going to buy these fantastic clients that support all of these funky features, but your AP doesn't, you're not going to see most of those benefits. The point we bring up here is not all the clients are going to be created equal. Some of them are going to have different, you know, they're not going to have a lot of the features. Okay. So my conclusion on this is, yes, I honestly believe that Wi-Fi 6 is going to be massive for us. If it's designed right, if it's implemented in the correct manner, if you have the correct devices. Is that all right, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much for your time. My name's Ian Terrell. Thank you.